hope you are relaxed and chill. We are getting into the Christmas, uh, you know, kind of a chill mood. So I'll try to keep it uh, fun for you. So first, uh, I'd like to go uh, for my name. And I'm originally from Barcelona in Spain. So my name is, uh, is in Catalan. So my name would read uh, Gerard Sanz. But I don't expect anyone to pronounce it in Catalan. Uh, so if you can, if you can pronounce it, uh, for example, in German, that will be Gerhard Sanz, I, I believe. Or you can use also the English version, which will be Gerard or Gerald. Uh, I don't mind. I, uh, I'm a developer advocate at uh, Amazon Web Services or AWS uh, for short. And you can see here some pictures of me, myself and uh, Percy. Some, some of the places I've been, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit sad these days, as you can imagine. Uh, I've, I've been travel, traveling a lot for the last few years. And I think this is my sixth year. And this will be my 162 talks, which is quite a lot. And uh, yeah, this is a, more or less like an intro, a little bit of a bragging uh, here, but yeah, let's move into the topic. So here is my first question for you. And if you are a web developer, maybe you are not so used to, uh, to think about this. And this is, uh, you know, before getting into PWAs, I want you to think about what uh, offline first means. And most of us will be developing web apps and we won't be handling offline that much. So I guess this is the first question to answer. And if you think about this, uh, the answer, I mean, what comes first to mind is the dinosaur, isn't it? So if you go offline, for some reason and you are using Chrome, if you press the space bar, you can go into this game, which is quite entertaining. But if you have been building an app, you probably want to give a better experience for your users, isn't it? So let's see how we can improve this. And the first thing I want to look into is how offline first, it's uh, being used for web. Uh, you can also use offline first for mobile, but we are going to focus for web. And the first thing we are going to do is uh, making our app offline ready. We don't want the dinosaur. And to avoid the dinosaur, we are going to be using um, progressive web apps. So that's going to be the first thing uh, to get rid of. The next thing that I want you to think of is how we can provide a great user experience. And sometimes people stop uh, at the first uh, stage when you get your app running offline and they don't think about how they can improve the user experience. So we want to put a little bit more effort uh, in that. And I'm gonna show you uh, how I did it for, for my app, for my demo. The next thing we will be looking is how we can add uh, the native-like features. and. When we develop for web, we are used to some features that may or may not be available uh, in our mobile phones. So you need to move a little bit from the web and start thinking more uh, as a mobile app. So we will be doing that and, uh, in the next uh, sections. Uh, the next thing that you will probably be thinking is, okay, so if I get my application to run while offline, the user maybe will be creating data, maybe will be removing data. So we need uh, the next bit, which is a reliable storage. So we want to make sure that any changes that the user makes while offline are being uh, stored safely. And probably the next thing that maybe you don't think about is when the user goes back online, we want to make the synchronization. So any changes that were made will be done in the background for the user. So for example, we don't want to give the user some kind of a pop-up asking uh, to what uh, data they want to synchronize. We want this to be uh, happening without user interaction. So these are some of the first uh, few things that we are gonna be solving. 
some of the problems that we will be facing. And, and that's it pretty much. So that's, that's the first section. And uh, I like to use these funny cat uh, pictures at the end of every section. So if you see a funny cat is the end of the section, you can, you can relax from that moment. Okay, so let's look at how we will use uh, PWAs or progressive web apps to achieve some of that uh, offline first features. The first thing I want to look into is what are the core requirements? So what makes a web app a PWA? And there are a few, few of them. The first thing is adding security. <clears throat> and this is using uh, HTTPS uh, hosting. And the main reason for doing that is that you want your content to come only from your domain. You don't want any content from coming from any other uh, sites and you don't want anyone messing with your user data. So these are the main uh, concerns. So PWAs require this as one of uh, its requirements. The next thing will be the usage of a service worker and the service worker will allow uh, you to use your web app on uh, while offline. So this, this will be at the center of this talk. And I'm going to show you how that works uh, in detail. So the next thing we want to be uh, looking at is how by using a progressive web app, we can use our app in different uh, devices. And Behind that will be uh, the web app manifest. So using the web app manifest, we can change how the user will experience our progressive web app in mobile, uh, desktop, and also other devices that you may uh, not be used to. Uh, we will see that how we can run these uh, web applications as standalone applications. So they will look as native applications in these devices. So that's something uh, interesting to look at. And I will show you some examples of this. Okay, so let's move on to the service worker. And we are now offline. So this is the service worker. Uh, doing its job while offline. So we have no network connection. We can see that we are offline and the service worker sits just in the middle of our index HTML page and the hosting. So one thing that will happen, one thing that uh, you may want to cover when you are offline is a refresh. So if we hit refresh for our uh, web app, there will be some request in the background and the service worker will do something quite smart. It will look at these requests and check if they are available in the local cache. So if we do that, uh, for this example, we will see that the app JS and the logo were a match and this can be then sent to the browser. And the result for this behavior is that for the browser, the application is working as if it was online. So this is the magic behind the service worker. And we will be adding a service worker to our uh, chat application that I'm going to introduce later. So that's pretty awesome. And usually when I explain this, these are the reactions from web developers. I don't know if you are surprised, but it's quite, it's quite an interesting behavior that you can run your web app offline. So now I want to introduce you AWS Amplify. And this is a, a new technology that tries to bridge uh, front-end and the cloud. And in order to introduce it, I like to go first to uh, explain this concept. And this is a new term, um, full stack serverless. And of course we have so many terms, why, why introduce a new one? Well, full stack, I think that everybody understand, but this is a new uh, context which is now on uh, top of serverless. And if you are not familiar with serverless, I'm going to introduce it uh, right now. But what AWS Amplify targets is this bridge between front-end and cloud. So that's gonna give us tools and make it much easier for you 
to develop full stack serverless apps without having to be a cloud expert. Okay, so let's look into the evolution of serverless. And if we look at the different stages of uh, the technology on the server side, we can uh, see uh, that applications can be built using a server, what it's called a monolith. And this has been going through different changes. Probably the next stage of uh, this technology was using containers and also introducing microservices. And you can see that uh, some of the features that were uh, available on the monolith, they are now available as microservices. And these are across the board. And these don't live anymore in a server, these live on different containers. So that's kind of the first wave, the first generation. The next generation is using serverless and functions. So we can see that the same features that we had uh, in the monolith, now they are transformed in smaller functions. And these are also split it from the microservices. So now we can build uh, our apps just by using these functions and orchestrating uh, the flow between them. So this is a little bit of uh, history behind serverless. And if we take an example, this is how traditional compares to serverless. So we can see at the top the traditional architecture. We have a client. It can be uh, web or mobile. And we have all the different uh, features that they live in the monolith. So they are all under the same uh, context. If we are looking at serverless, we can see that now we have moved some of this logic to the client. So now we also need to involve the client, and this is why AWS Amplify uh, gets into the picture. You can, uh, you can achieve that from the front end to the cloud. And then on the cloud, we can see that we have different services. Uh, one common service will be authentication. The other will be the business logic. So we can see that we have um, uh, split it, the different features in functions. So these blocks will be functions. And then we also have a data source that it's represented now as a separate uh, entity. So this is more or less how you can translate this uh, traditional architecture to serverless. Um, I don't know what is your background, but you can see more or less how you can move from one to the other. If we look at AWS Amplify in more detail, we can see that we have different pieces uh, playing together. Uh, you can use any of these pieces separately, but we will also use them together to achieve uh, these full stack serverless apps that I was talking about. So we have the framework and these are a set of libraries that will help you develop your, uh, your applications. There's uh, support for mobile and web platforms. And be, besides this, we have also developer tools that will help you build uh, during the different stages of development. And of course, we will have some cloud services that will integrate those features. At the center, as uh, we are also use with Vue, we have uh, Amplify CLI. So that will help us scaffold, uh, create and provision the services in the cloud. So we are, we are seeing that mainly Amplify is bringing front end and back end together uh, seamlessly. So let's look into the building blocks that uh, AWS Amplify uses, and these are called categories. So let me show you some of the categories that you uh, can use uh, to build your apps. So we have authentication, API. Uh, we are gonna be using API uh, for GraphQL. There's also access to, uh, to REST APIs. Uh, interactions is uh, chatbots, uh, analytics. This is extended reality, and we have also access to classic you know, storage, access to uh, functions, uh, which will allow you to create these uh, serverless applications. There's also hosting, of course, notifications. So you can uh, add uh, mobile notifications uh, for different platforms. It's all uh, integrated, but <clears throat> we also include in these options, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So you can also access to translation, uh, 
text to speech, uh, speech to text, uh, also image recognition, and it will also give you uh, metadata from uh, documents. So there's a lot of features and uh, in this example, in this talk, I'm gonna use authentication and GraphQL. So don't, don't get scared. A lot of people is like, oh my God, that's a lot of stuff. You don't need to learn everything at once. So we are just gonna look in a very simple example. So let's, let's do that. <laughs> For this uh, talk, I'm gonna focus on uh, a chat, a single room chat uh, application, which is called Chatty. And I'm gonna be using Vue as the client. So this is, uh, this is how it looks. Um, we need to log in, so we will have different users uh, accessing to this uh, room. Uh, we will have access to real time, so we can exchange messages between uh, the different users. Uh, we can also see that we can uh, remove uh, the messages. I mean, if it gets uh, too noisy, you can just remove, go ahead and remove the data. And we are going to be looking at how uh, we make this work offline. So let's go back to a uh, design. Um, the way it looks uh, for this uh, chatty app is we have uh, usage of this AWS Amplify uh, console service. We are gonna host our application there. That will provide us the HTTPS uh, hosting. And it's just a common hosting. So we will have our HTML and the different assets, including our JavaScript. The nice thing about using AWS Amplify is that it will be uh, connected to your repo. So every time that you commit changes, it will uh, re-deploy uh, your application on the cloud. So that's a nice thing that you also get with this service. Um, the next thing we are going to be using is the authentication. So users can sign up and also log in. So that will be using Amazon Cognito which is a, a service that you can uh, use. And on the data source, we are going to be using GraphQL with uh, AWS AppSync, which is a managed service for GraphQL APIs. And this will be sourced by Amazon DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL uh, data source. So this is more or less what we are going to build. Uh, I guess that it looks quite quite uh, complex, but if you look at it, we, we are just adding a data source, we are adding authentication and the hosting. So this will be very uh, common in other applications that you, that you will use. So how we will approach this uh, development is by defining a GraphQL schema. And this is because we are using uh, AWS AppSync. And the way you build uh, using GraphQL uh, schema is by defining the different types and the relationship between those types. For this application, we just need one type, which I call chatty. And in, <clears throat> instead of building all of the uh, resolvers by yourself, we can use uh, what we call uh, GraphQL transform, which is this add model. And that will provide us all of these uh, resolvers that will have access to our data source, which in this case, it will be Amazon DynamoDB. The way you define your GraphQL schema is by uh, introducing the fields. And we can see that we have some uh, inbuilt types. So we have the ID, the string, and we can also use uh, types defined by the uh, Amplify team, AWS Daytime will uh, do, uh, will create the timeline for the different messages. And maybe here you, you can notice the exclamation points. So these exclamation points means that these fields are mandatory. And for the last one, we have an optional field. So it's, it's quite easy to, uh, to follow. We don't have any relations, but you can create as many types and uh, relations as you, as you want. For this example, I only need uh, a type and that will give us all of the um, operations to create, update and delete. Uh, messages. And a nice addition for uh, using GraphQL is that I can also use subscriptions for real time. So I can also get uh, real time updates when any user creates their messages. 
Okay, so this is a little bit of an intro. Of course, if you want to know more about GraphQL, you will need to uh, dig a little bit deeper, but this is all you need if you want to create the solution I want to show you today. So just provide the, the type, the model, and you can go ahead and create your app. For this specific scenario where we want to use <clears throat> our app offline, we are gonna be using Amplify Data Store. And Amplify Data Store is gonna be using uh, GraphQL behind the scenes. And the main uh, thing that we need to uh, think about is the models. And these models are gonna be using the GraphQL schema that, we, uh, that I show you before. And it's gonna create the interfaces so you can store the data locally. We are gonna be using Indexed TV because we are using web, but it also implements uh, the same data store using SQLite if you are using mobile. The way it will work uh, when we are going from offline to online is that it will use a sync engine that will make the changes on our API, which is managed by AppSync. Um, by default, it's gonna be using DynamoDB, but you can also integrate uh, that service with AWS Lambda or Elasticsearch. So this is more or less like an overview of the architecture that is gonna be uh, working on the client, uh, both for offline and online. Okay, so we are right, right in the money. Uh, as you can see, I'm using uh, crazy cat uh, pictures. So I hope I'm, I didn't disappoint. So how we are gonna make it a progressive web app? Well, we are gonna use the, the view CLI and we are lucky enough to have a specific plugin to add PWA features. And is that easy as running view at, at view slash PWA? And we are gonna get most of the work done for, for us. So some of the changes are gonna be around, uh, of course, the service worker and these are done on the main GS file adding an import and then of course we need the source for that service worker. After running that command it's gonna add everything that it's on the build so it's gonna add the index HTML page, it's gonna add the web app manifest is gonna add the service worker. But one thing that you need to take into account is that you need to run the build uh, for production before you, you do your tests. And usually when you do that, you will get all of these assets. And if we look at the different assets, we can see that we have support for different platforms. And this all comes with the web app manifest. So here I just add some of the assets. There's some icons for Android. You will also have uh, <clears throat> icons and assets for uh, platforms like Microsoft or iOS. So these are some changes that uh, will be made the moment you do uh, the first build. There's also the files for the app, uh, the web app manifest. There is a configuration file that it's the manifest.json. And we also have all of the assets that will be pre catch or install when we run uh, our PWA app for the first time. Um, last, we have the service worker, and this will be the implementation of our service worker. And we are going to stick with the default for, uh, for this. One thing that I recommend you is uh, to run the HTTP, HTTP server locally. So you can run uh, this command using Python if you are on a, on a Mac and that will run uh, the command locally. If you don't have access to a local HTTP server, you can also uh, deploy the the build uh, assets and uh, that will work as well. But as you can imagine, that can take a little bit longer. So I recommend you to, to try to find a local HTTP server to do that. 
One thing that I found when uh, using that uh, PWA plugin is that it didn't uh, cover all of the assets. So for example, for chat for the chatty app, it didn't cover the logo. And when I look at the reasons why, it was because this was an external uh, asset. This wasn't on my uh, public folder, so it wasn't part of the build. And what I had to do is uh, go for a custom uh, configuration. So in order to do that custom configuration, I had to do like few changes uh, to my uh, build setup. So you need to go into the view config.js and the first thing we want to do is have access to the web app manifest so we can uh, use this uh, code snippet here and then we will change the configuration for the pwa uh, plugin some of the things that i did here is uh, reference the properties on the web app manifest so i don't need to uh, take care of two different sets of uh, configuration the sum of the configuration that is specific to a certain platform like this Apple mobile uh, web app capable and the, app, the Apple mobile web app status bar style. So you can see here, if you look at the docs, you can uh, change the experience for the different platforms. So this is just a small example for that. What uh, the PWA plugin uh, is using behind the scenes is the Workbox uh, library. And if we want to use the custom uh, configuration, we need to change uh, the plugin mode to inject manifest. So that will allow us to do uh, the customizations that I need. Uh, still, I'm going to use the same uh, service worker. So I just need to add uh, a pointer to where the file is, and that's going to now create the same uh, output for uh, for the deployment as as the default configuration that we had uh, before. So that's the first change that I did. the The second change that I did was changing the actual uh, source code for the service worker. So I have a few code snippets here that I will go through. This is creating. Um, the local cache, so we can find it on the developer tools in the browser. Uh, these are some options for when we do updates. So every time you do an update, it's going to uh, install that new version uh, in instantly and it's not going to wait for uh, the clients to refresh. So these are the options uh, that I'm using for my config. Uh, the one thing that I had to include is this uh, external icon and I'm using that as a new entry on these catch files. The actual array it's, uh, lo is longer so I just have to add a new entry. Uh, here you can see uh, the, the rest of the code so that's going to add all these uh, pre-catch uh, assets. And this is gonna include everything that was on the public folder for the build, plus this external uh, SBG uh, that is part of my, uh, of my logo. So this is how you can go farther and customize it uh, a little bit more than the default option, but we got most of it working uh, just running the plugin. So this is uh, now <clears throat> the end of the changes that I did, but I want to show you a demo and I think we still, we still have time. So let me, let me go and show you uh, the demo. So this is uh, the version of uh, the chatty app here. So I'm going to write a message. Hi there. I'm speaking at... View GS Leipzig. Okay, and I'm gonna send it. That's um, that's gonna be uh, sharing the message to uh, the rest of the users. For now, it's only me, so there's no much going on. But one thing that I want to test is if I uh, I have offline uh, access. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh. And this is, a, this is the application before I did the changes. So I wanted to show you what's the behavior. So there's no much going on actually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to another demo. And 
as you can see, we have two users. One is using um, Chrome on the left. The other is using uh, Firefox on the right. We can see that the user on the left is JSANS. Uh, the user on the right is a robot. Uh, it's another user that I create previously. We can log in and log out. Um, and here we can see the messages. So any messages that I write appear on the left, any messages that anybody else writes appear on the right. One thing that I can do now, because uh, this is now the release uh, version, and you can see here, that's uh, my deployed version. So now it includes the offline uh, behavior. I can now install it on my mobile. So I've installed it on my mobile and I'm gonna show you how the real time works. So I, I, just, I just wrote a little message. This is from the robot. And let me just share this message. It should, it should come. Uh, there we go. So hi there, I'm a robot. And I was, uh, I was, I had the time to add the, the beer icon there as you can see it's working so how how is this uh, now working behind the scenes i want to show you two things one thing that i want to show you is how is this working offline so let me let me do the same uh, test that we did before i'm just going to go offline and i'm going to refresh so i want to see that my app is working offline and one thing that is happening is that it's asking me to log in. So now I need to very briefly log in. Okay. And when I log in, I can go offline and refresh. And you can see that the application is working offline. So we have uh, solved that problem. One thing that I also want to show you is uh, how I can uh, share messages while I'm offline. So I can see there's uh, some information uh, for the user and it's telling me that I'm offline. One thing that I like to do is uh, share a sequence. So one thing I want to do here is I want to send a couple of messages and I'm gonna do the same from this uh, other client. So that's gonna be two, then three, and then here four. So this client is online, this client is offline. So now what I want to do is go offline, uh, sorry, online, and I want this information to be synchronized and see what happens. Uh, another thing that I want to do is I want to do, uh, I want to check what's uh, being shared on over the network. And let's do that very quickly. And one thing that we can see is that the messages have been uh, synchronized. We can see that also the, the robot client has been synchronized. We can also see that the timeline has been uh, respected. This is because we are using uh, the same uh, information, the same timeline. And the messages from the two clients have been put in the, in the correct order. One other thing that I want to show you is the information that was shared. So we can see here the GraphQL queries and what was the message that was shared. So here we can see that the message that was shared was the message number three. That was the last message from this offline client. And this is exactly uh, how it works. So this is uh, the Amplify Data Store, uh, the sync engine, um, exchanging the messages for you so you don't have any user interaction. If we look at the implementation for uh, the web app manifest, we can see it by going to the developer tools and application uh, tab. And these are all the details. All of these uh, different configurations will tell how the app will behave in different platforms. This is uh, on, on the browser, we but we can also use it as I show you on a mobile phone and you could also install it in Windows or Mac. If we look at the service worker, there's few options here that we can use. And another thing that I want to show you is how the catch uh, works. And here we can see that all of the assets uh, have been included. There's also the SVG 
that uh, I had the issue. It's also being included on the catch. So that's uh, working. And that's pretty much all that I wanted to show you. So we can go back to the slides. And here, I want to go over all of the features that we uh, implemented. So now we have Chatty as a progressive web app and we can use this uh, web, uh, progressive web app in different platforms. We have desktop, um, we have Mac, uh, Microsoft, uh, desktop applications that we can use. We can use also for mobile and of course web. One thing that we have uh, gain is the performance because we install the assets as we have seen in our uh, PWA plugin. We get those assets uh, pre-catch on the browser. So that's going to be super fast. So we get better performance and we can see it working in different uh, devices. So this is uh, how the feature is called. It's called Add to Home Screen. So when you navigate to your PWA, you can uh, add uh, that uh, PWA to your uh, home screen in your mobile, but you can also do that in as a desktop application. This will create a standalone app. So it looks exactly like a native app. You can see here on the left, I have Android. On the right, I have um, an iPhone. And this is how it looks. So it, it just works and it gives you that uh, native-like uh, feeling. Still, we have some uh, offline uh, features that we are not covering. So I would say it's 99% done. We have uh, the app that survives uh, offline reload, as I was showing in the demos. We also have the message stored uh, while offline. I don't think I've shown that. Let me show you very quickly how that looks. We need to go to Indexed TV and we can see the information here. So this is where Amplify Data Store store all of the messages and you can see hear all of the messages. So hi there, I'm speaking at Vue.js Leipzig and some of the data is uh, used for synchronization. These are using the underscore. So these are for the sync engine uh, to send the updates over web sockets. And this is the information uh, local, locally stored. So we have those messages stored locally. We can also share the messages when we go online. And that's what I uh, demonstrated before, but we still have some other things that we can improve. Uh, if you think about other uh, similar apps, you probably want to tell the user when it goes offline because otherwise it can create confusion. If the user is writing messages, but nobody's uh, replying the messages, maybe the user will get a bad experience. So one thing that we can do is add some uh, notification, some kind of a uh, warning. The, the way I did that uh, improvement was using a flag. And I'm gonna use that to show and hide a message. Uh, this will look something like this uh, to tell the user that it's uh, offline. And in order to catch those changes on the network, I'm gonna be using uh, a hub listener. And the Amplify Data Store is gonna be sending different uh, network status. And whenever the, uh, the network goes active or inactive, I can change my uh, flag, which is offline, uh, to change uh, the behavior of my uh, application. So this is how it looks, and that will give enough feedback to the user that, hey, you have uh, lost connectivity. If you want to go ahead and create the messages, uh, it's okay. They're going to be stored locally, but they are going to be only shared when you go uh, online. So this is pretty much all that I wanted to show you. Uh, as an overview, this is uh, the main difference between uh, regular web single page applications and progressive web apps. We have covered uh, some of these features. So just to go over them uh, very quickly, we have faster PWAs. They can work offline and online. They can also work as a separate uh, standalone app 
which give us access to not only uh, the browser, but mobile and desktop. And we also have access to native like features. If you compare the two, you probably are gonna find PWAs uh, a little bit better. So that's uh, why I'm rating them three stars. And this is the end. So I hope I could uh, give you like an overview of how offline fares up and how you can implement those with Vue, uh, taking care of the user experience and the different uh, mishaps that you can find along the way. And I would say that it's time for you to try it. So here I give you a couple of resources. This is a the solution this is the final solution so you can see uh, the final code there's also a workshop uh, which is a step by step uh, uh, material where you will be building that uh, real time chat app that i show you so thanks sense uh, <laughs> that's another crazy cat so thanks for listening uh, i uh, i'm happy to answer any questions that you that you may have now